Britannomyces goes hand in hand with sour beer, so it was only a matter of time before I had to try it. What happens when you co-pitch Philly Sour Yeast and Brett? Let's make some beer. So we're going off script on this one and I'm aiming for a 5% pale ale that's dry, tart, and juicy with a hint of Brett character. To get there, we'll start with a dry water profile with 140 parts per million calcium, 18 parts per million magnesium, 25 parts per million sodium, 300 parts per million sulfate, 55 parts per million chloride, and 110 parts per million bicarbonate. This step isn't necessarily required to make good beer, but it definitely helps, especially if you want to make something great. To that, I'm adding some locally malted grains from Proximity Malt. I have 84% pale malt, 10% malted oats, and 6% dextrin. Let's get it going. I'll keep mashing this in until everything is nice and saturated, then I'll start a one hour timer. One thing I've been doing a lot recently is lifting the basket during the mash in addition to stirring every 15 minutes or so. The combination of those things seems to keep the temperature nice and even throughout the kettle. Okay, that's the end of the mash. Time to yank these grains and get our boil started. up to a full boil and it's time for the first hop addition. Here's 5 grams or about 7 IBUs of Citra and our short 30 minute boil starts now. We've got 15 minutes left in the boil and it's time to start sanitizing the plate chiller. It's also time for the next hop addition. Here's 10 more grams or about 9 IBUs of Citra. Okay, time's up. Let's drop this down to 160 Fahrenheit or 71 Celsius for the Whirlpool and here comes 50 grams of Idaho 7 and 28 grams of Cryo Citra. 20 minutes to go. All 
right, that's enough of that. Time to chill this down and get ready for fermentation. As we get close to pitching temp, I'm oxygenating the wort with pure oxygen and transferring to the fermenter. And finally, I can pitch my yeast and close this up for fermentation. day I saw clear signs of life and on day three I decided it was time to make a move. Now that the Philly Sour Yeast has had some time to sour the wort, I'm adding Suburban Brett from Imperial Yeast to give this beer a little funk. I'm also adding an ounce of Cryo Amarillo and an ounce of Cryo Pop. Just a few days later, as we're approaching final gravity, I added another charge of dry hops just as before an ounce of cryo amarillo and an ounce of cryo pop to make sure this beer is nice and juicy. Now, let's find out if I hit my mark. It's getting dark early these days, but here it is nonetheless. The beer ended up a light orange color and the head is disappearing fast. It has a nice hoppy aroma that's tropical with lots of pineapple. And going in for a taste, it's dry and refreshing all the way through with nice fruity flavors and I can taste a little bit of that bread. I think the one thing I would change is the carbonation level, but overall, I like how this beer turned out. It seems like co-pitching Philly sour yeast with another strain can be a good way to add another layer of complexity to beers and I'd be excited to try some other yeasts. As always, thanks to our friends and partners for helping to make this show possible, and thanks to you guys for watching until the end. Have you used Philly Sour Yeast with another yeast? Has anyone tried co-pitching with a Hef strain? Let me know in the comments, and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you again soon.